Monday afternoon, well into September at this point. Um, and I'm just now starting the vlog. No, I think I have clips from earlier in the month. I think so. So I thought I would just talk about what I'm reading right now, some thoughts I've been having. Um, reading The Possessed by Elif Batuman. Um, in case you don't know, this is Miss Batuman's first published work. <laughs> this is a collection of non-fiction little essays centered around her time studying Russian literature as a PhD student at Stanford. Um, it's literally adventures with Russian books and the people who read them. Okay, what do you guys think of this cover? First of all, most importantly, it's like, I know that it's trying to be cute and cartoony and like I wanna like it, but it's kind of ugly, you know? Like, is it ugly cute or is it just ugly? Let me know what you think. But I'm having a lot of fun with this. It's like, okay, well, I'm only on chapter two. There's like a chunky intro and then the first chapter was about Isaac um, Babel, Babel, and I think it's going to be like each chapter kind of focuses on um, a different, I guess, like Russian uh, notable author or subject. Um, and then obviously, of course, in typical Batman fashion, her, you know, her infusing little tidbits about her life and just like really honestly funny things this reading this is making me realize like obviously i liked the idiot because of a lot of like i think pretty obvious reasons like it's about a turkish american girl going to college like i've had a lot of similar experiences i was interested in it from that but what makes i think Elif Batuman specifically, her writing so good is it's just so humorous. Like it's so funny. <laughs> and it's like funny in the best way where she just kind of like, look at this, look how ridiculous this is, this thing that happened to me and I was really like stupid or this person was stupid. I don't know, it's just, she has that ability to make you really like interested in random stories it's like the type of person where like normally you don't like listening about other people's dreams right but i feel like like if she was telling you about her dream it would be very intriguing you know um but yeah i mean this is it's definitely the type of book that's like wow like you are making me interested in russian literature um or just like subjects that i either knew nothing about before or was just like I I don't have any interest in reading about it in any significant way um yeah what else this book is like it makes you want to just like take a seminar with her like I feel like it would be so good to like take one of her classes imagine like intro to Russian lit with it of one this is kind of what this is um but it makes me want to like take a class with her. I feel like she would. Anyways, oh, and also it's like in the introduction, she does talk about um, a lot of like the main stories that are present in like The Idiot. Um, and it's interesting to see how like which parts of that were fictionalized in The Idiot are actually like from her life and which aren't like it's because this was written first um and it's not it's like nonfiction. you get what i'm trying to say this is definitely the type of book that i am not like trying to speed through it which is what i always say about nonfiction. it's like i definitely take my time with it especially because i feel like with the chapters it feels so like they can just stand on their own it's kind of like oh i read this really long article or something like i'm satisfied for now um, and I feel like I can, it's just the type of thing that I'm going to want to pick up whenever I have that desire.
so nervous it's been a while September has truly flown by um I'm in my bathroom if you can't tell you know whatever it has good lighting I can put my phone up it is what it is um I tested positive for COVID earlier this week um but it, everything is fine. I very thankfully did not get the bad end of the stick with it. I was just like sick for like two days. Um, yeah, it feels like it's been a while since I've like talked with you guys. Um, I wish I could show you my full outfit, but I can't really. I just really, really like this color purple right now, like the dark plum. And then a cute little purple skirt. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about the book that I've been reading while I've been sick, which also happens to match my outfit pretty well, I have to say. This came into my life in an interesting way. I was at Pegasus Books on College Avenue the East Bay and one okay the like main component of why East Bay bookstores are just the best like ever is the I think it's because there's just so many of them and they're all so good they like constantly need to keep up their stock this is like a theory I've made in my head I don't know if this is actually real or not but they're like I think to like go through their stock quicker they're just like always having these like random sales on like new contemporary fiction books like they're not even used like literally this like this is a popular book and it was like I think eight dollars when normally it's like 30 it's hardcover and they'll just like do this randomly um like all the time like there's just constantly like a um selection of sale books that I have never seen anywhere else. It's amazing. So that's what happened to me with motherhood. I was like, okay, I need to read this. Also because I'm doing a, I want to do like a larger video on like mommy issues, more just about like books about motherhood. Um, and I was like, I can't do that video until I've read this. Um, and I have like 40 pages left, I think 40 or 30 pages left. Um, yeah, I've been reading it through this, this time of rest and it's, it's been great company. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, wow. Okay. The way that the like light looks through the bathroom window, it's like glittery and sparkly. It's really beautiful. This book, as you might be able to tell, is all about the idea of motherhood and it's by Sheila Hetty. So... Of course, it's like not a traditional novel structure. Um, definitely in the auto fiction like category. Um, and it's basically her as the like writer artist um, asking these questions about whether she personally wants to be a mother and, you know, what are the stakes of being a mother as someone who is also very focused on their creative projects like as a writer or an artist or just anyone that is living like a, a creative life um especially like as a cis woman who like has these pressures to like be pregnant um like get married and have kids kind of thing and she's like and she's like approaching 40 and what's really cool about motherhood that everyone always talks about when um they talk about this book is that she asks these questions these kind of like yes or no questions and she rolls a dice and it's and the dice is like yes or no 
Um, and so she's kind of playing with this idea of letting randomness kind of help her through her real like crippling indecision, um, which is something that I find very relatable um, as someone who also has crippling indecision. And yeah, I think this, this book, okay. I am enjoying it because I think I knew what I was getting into very clearly. However, I can see how someone would pick up this book and be like, oh, like it's like about these like big questions about motherhood, woman, and art, and then get, and then if they're just not if coming at it in the right mood, I can see how this book would come off just a little too like, pretentious and kind of like out of touch with reality a little bit you know what I mean you know like I think it's like the, Sh the Sheila Hetty thing like you're either gonna like like it and like be into it or not I find this book like successful and what it sets out to do um, which is just like ask a lot of questions and see where it leads to with her like line of thought and I I think it's interesting structurally she like adds these um like these pictures um with the story that I always I always love um and I think she's asking a lot of questions that I think women have a hard time acknowledging or even questions in the first place um, however, I have to say that I think it, maybe it doesn't need to be 280 something pages. Um, something about the length feels a little like indulgent to like what the project is. Um, and I kind of feel like I'm at the point near the end where I'm like, okay, like I enjoyed this. I get the point. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just my poor attention spam also with being stuck in bed with COVID and just like on TikTok for so many hours. But um, I think there's, there are kind of limits to what she's doing with this because she does kind of get into this weird like cis heteronormative like lens, like view on like motherhood that I feel like is kind of weird. I think she kind of like equates a lot of like ability to give birth like physical ability to like um get pregnant give birth she equates that a lot with like womanhood in general which i think is like um a very like limited gaze and then also there were just kind of some moments of like she does that whole like like he has this masculine energy and like i have this feminine energy thing um that i feel like seems really like it's like that like new age reconstruction of like the same old like gender binary um but with like energy in front of it it just like feels kind of weird you guys know what i'm trying to say um i think there were just like some there's some limitations with what she's doing but overall i like it that's all i had to say about that um talked for a long time again really show you my whole bathroom oh that's the toilet and that's the sink this is what I was trying to say about the skirt it's like that kind you know what I mean and then obviously the slippers at home no shoes in the house in this household Hello, it is the last few days of September. This month 
has flown by. Um, honestly, the second half of it, kind of rough for me. It's been mentally pretty difficult, I would say, the last two weeks. Um, but I'm hoping I'm getting out of it and I'm here with a little snack. First of all, I'm eating like actually the best cookie in the world. Um, it's like the really, really, really gingery molasses cookies um, that my best friend that I live with, Sally, she makes. Um, I will find the recipe and link them below because they're like actually the best cookies in the world. These tapache drinks that I love, um, I'm going through like every flavor and they're all so good. I'm gonna put her right here. I wanted to give my final thoughts on motherhood after I finished it. This is a perfect little COVID read. She definitely got me in the last 30 pages. Like the last kind of wrap up really, really just squeezed my heart. Yeah, I don't think this was a perfect book, but I really liked how she kind of brought all these questions she was having back again in the conclusion and like brought back, kind of went through her relationship with her mother and just like her maternal lineage. Um, she kind of used going backwards to like try to understand how she wants to move forward with childhood, um, not childhood, with like motherhood, whether to have children. And ultimately she, it's interesting how this book kind of answers the question for her simply by allowing the passage of time where she reaches 40 and decides that like she can't really have children at this point like that time has passed and by writing this book to come to like figure it out she just kind of naturally came to that conclusion and when she actually like sat and thought about it and was like yeah I, I'm not gonna have children it felt like the right answer for her um I liked that I think what really didn't work for me with this book was just like the general like I did not care about her relationship with like the guy and I just like didn't care about their fights and I didn't really care about him and I feel like he just said like weird like man things he kind of had the vibe of like a feminist guy that's like very strongly was like women shouldn't be forced to have children slash like you shouldn't have a child and there was something kind of almost like limiting and like controlling about that how strong of an opinion he had um I mean you can like dislike a character and still enjoy their presence in a story like a narrative but this wasn't the case for me I just was like I kind of wish you weren't really involved in this at all <laughs> this is my first Sheila Hetty and I get what people are saying like I I get her her thing I get the like soul searching questions this was kind of the last book i wanted to read before um kind of completing my my series on the books about the theme of motherhood um i've read a lot of them this year i kind of just like fell into that theme um i think it's been lar largely popular um in the zeitgeist. I think I've, I've kind of reached my limit on the amount of books I can read on this topic and this was kind of a good conclusion to it just because I do think there can be a little too much of a good thing. I really enjoy the books that I read about motherhood um, but there are other stories out there that I want to read. Speaking of like middle-aged woman going through some big crisis Second Place by Rachel Tusk. I'm reading her. Um, she's a short one. Listen, I feel like you, we all know this at this point, but Rachel Tusk is like my stan white woman writer. Like, she is in the canon for me. Um, I am obsessed with her writing. <laughs> Uh, and I just feel like she's one of those like really great authors right now that also happen to be a white woman, but it's like not annoying. Like she's not 
annoying about it. I feel like everybody knows what this is about, but it's um, a shorter story about a woman who lives um, in a remote but beautiful rural area, like a marshy landscape. And her and her husband invite various um, artists and writers and various people to come stay in their second place. Um, kind of very much like residency vibes, but casual, <laughs> casual residency. And she basically get, gets obsessed with this one um, painter, this man, and she manages to get him to come to the second place. And it is about her, her obsession with him and her like consuming desire to be and her basically her consuming desire for validation um, from a male gaze, specifically this one man. Um, and it's like written in a letter, a pistol, you know the word I'm trying to say in a letter format to this other person, Jeffers. I'm not quite sure what the dynamics are right now. Maybe something will be revealed. I have to say, this feels really different than other husks I've read, mainly the Outline Trilogy, where there's like actually a plot. <laughs> like, the characters are actually having like normal conversations that aren't just like long, long monologues back and forth. <laughs> like, um, and you actually get like descriptions and like an understanding of like what each character is, um, which feels so weird with Cusk, but weird in a good way. I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. Julie from Linen Librarian recently talked about in her blurb challenge of um, this book in relation to I Love Dick by I'm forgetting the author um, about woman consumed with male gaze so it's making me want to read that as well i might put a hold on that in the library anyways those are my updates i'm a slow reader what else is new i'm gonna go to my ceramics class now which i'm really nervous about